you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brahma018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another FIFA 20 Custom Tactics series, the series where I show you how to recreate and adapt real life systems in FIFA 20. So, today is essentially a part 2 of a video, essentially, well loosely anyway. So, what we did is, we did recreated Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's 4 2 3 1 system with Manchester United. Uh, by the way, if you haven't watched that video yet, do go and check that one out first. It's pivotal that you go and watch that one first before watching this one. And what I did in that video is I sort of posed a question. You know, Manchester United do also switch to a 3 5 2, 3 4 1 2, whatever you want to call it, um, in certain games. And if people would like to see that, then I would be happy to do that video as well. And the response was you know, very much overwhelmingly positive of, you know, let's see the 3 5 2 as well. So, um, you know, well, I'm essentially doing a, a second part now where I show you the 3 5 2. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. If you do enjoy this video, by the way, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like as well and let me know that you are enjoying it. Uh, and on that note, we will get into it. So, um, first things first, what I want to talk about is. Uh, why they play this system. So, now of course, they've got the 4-2-3-1, um, and generally you've got a lot of pace in that, you've got a lot of wingers, um, with the likes of Martial, Rashford, Greenwood, James, etc. Um, so, what happens is you'll find they play the 3-4-1-2 generally um, when they play the better teams. So, for example, uh, Manchester City, Liverpool, uh, Chelsea as well. What do all these teams have in common? Well, they all play a variant of a 4-3-3. And so why Manchester United switch to this system is that then they are able to mark all of the players in terms of the opposition positioning. So for example, you've got three at the back here. Now all of these can go one-on-one -on -one with the front three. So with Man City, for example, the front three are all you know, marks there. They've got their men. So on goal kicks, on when they're trying to play out from the back, they can all stick to their men. And with the midfield, you've got Williams, who can be on the opposition fullback, the opposition right back, Wambisaka on the opposition left back. The two centre defensive midfielders are on the more advanced centre midfielders. So say like a De Bruyne and a David Silva, Fernandez then on the holding midfielder, who would usually be Rodri uh, at least this season, and then the two strikers on the two centre backs. So they're able to sort of go on to the man press and the man marking system as effectively as possible because they've essentially matched the opposition system um, but you know more sort of hiddenly kind of anyway so um, yeah what you've got here is essentially an, an ideal man marking system and that's the best way that they can do that because as I spoke about in the other video they do like to uh, sort of employ a man press and a man marking system so this allows them to do that as efficiently as they can. And that's why you will see them play a system closer to this when they come up against, as I said, teams like Man City and, and Liverpool, etc., who are employing that 4 3 3. And it just gives them an extra bit layer of protection, really. But because you've got the two the two front men, in addition to Fernandez and, and you know the wing backs as well, you've still got that emphasis going forward. It's not just all out defence, you've got that, that out ball going forward, and in particular on the counter as well. So that's why they do play the 3 5 2, and that's why I would um, implore all of you watching this to use this system when you do come, come up against the better teams. You know, don't really bother when you're coming up, say you're in career mode and you're playing one of the teams lower down in the table. Stick to the 4 2 3 1. You know, don't bother playing this because, um, you know, this is more employed out of a, a defensive sort of as a defensive system and something to offer more protection. So, um, yeah, in those games, it certainly should be effective for you. So, what we'll do here is we'll move on to the um, instructions, and then we'll go on to the tactics as well. You don't need to change anything in terms of the positioning. So, start off with De Gea at the back, and it's going to be the same as what we do in the previous video. And a lot of these roles are actually the same, but you know we will talk about them anyway. We have him comes to crosses and then balance. You don't need him on sweeper keeper really, because not only does he not really do that. Uh, but also they're not playing a, a really high line either. So, you know, there shouldn't be as much need to deal with balls over the top. With the three centre-backs, you can keep them all as they are. Stay while attacking and also normal interceptions as well. 
Moving on to the midfield next. So we've got the two holding midfielders and their roles are going to be exactly the same as what they were um, in the previous video. And that's man mark, stay back while attacking and cover wing. So, you know, there's not too much to explain here. I spoke about in the last video, sort of the, the man press that they like to um, employ and also the man marking system as well. Of course, you can't do that for every single player, only the central defensive midfielders you're able to sort of select a, a marking system so you've got to hope that other players will do the same but um you know at least with two holding midfielders you can get them and hopefully you can you know sort of lock down the two advanced central midfielders with that um have both of them on cover wing obviously because of course you've only got um one wing back each side um it's also worth bearing in mind that we are using the 3 4 one, two system, so they are right and left midfielders. But don't worry, they will still act as wingbacks because um, we have them on, well, we'll come on to that, but we'll have them on come back on defence and, um, you know, you should see in-game that will work, work very effectively. Um, so, yeah, that's the two holding midfielders. Um, next, we can move on to, yeah, the two fullbacks, I guess. So we got them both on comeback on defense. And as you'll see in the gameplay on the right, um, you know, it still works effectively. They'll bed into a back five when they need to. So don't worry about them being midfielders. You're not going to have all these open gaps. But what you'll find is they will just get further forward. And that's what you'll need them to do in a lot of situations because they're the ones creating the width. And speaking of width, on chance creation, have them staying wide as well. Like I say, they're the ones who are the out ball when you're going out wide. They're essentially as close to the touchline as possible, apart from, of course, when the opposition are in possession, in which case they'll come and get narrow and, and bed in closer to uh, to the rest of the team. But, um, you know, going forward, they're the ones who are, you know, when you're looking to switch it out wide and get it out wide, um, you know, they'll be the options there. On support on crosses, have them on stay on the edge of the box for cross. Again, as we're saying, there's that emphasis on defence. And if you've got them both getting into the box for crosses, um, then you're going to be very, very vacant on that... Uh, that left-hand side going backwards and you know Manchester United when they're playing this system against you know the big teams they're not prepared to take those sort of unnecessary risks and nor do they need to either you know keep wan Masaka, keep Brandon Williams out wide and you know that's where really they can they can do some damage there they can really whip balls into the box they can create width they can even get people on one-on-one -on -one, really um, I think they do that fairly effectively as well. So, you know, with that, you've you've got that emphasis and they'll be all right doing that. So that's the back eight really sorted. Now we can move on to Fernandez, and his roles are exactly the same as in the 4 2 3 1 system. We have him on comeback on defense, of course, stay on the edge of the box, crosses and free roam as well. Uh, the only difference you'll find here is, of course, because you don't have wingers, he's going to be a little bit more pivotal when he um, comes out into the wide areas. And you will get him coming out into the wide areas because, you know, he's on free roam and that's what you'll find with players like that. Um, but essentially, essentially, this makes him a little bit more effective because you get him, in, him into the game more um, and as a result, he's having more space to work into and more opportunities with the ball um, to, to create something. So, you know, with free roaming, he actually becomes more pivotal in this system them um, even more so than he is in the 4 2 3 1. We stay on the edge of the box of crosses. Um, of course, we want him circulating so that when the opposition sort of clear it, etc., he's there to retain possession, recycle it, um, and then he can go again. And what, what has been a big part of his game for Manchester United you know, is being on the edge of the box and looking to get a shot away, if not creating something else. So, um, you know, with this, you do sort of get that, um, you know, in abundance. Moving on to the two strikers next, we have Marshall and Rashford in this case. So we've one of them, and in this case, I make it Rashford because, you know, he's just better technically um, as well as having more pace and energy as well. He's going to be the one drifting wide. So he'll come into those wide areas more, collecting the balls in the half spaces in between, you know, the very wide areas and the central areas. Um, and so as a result, again, you get him onto the ball more, but also, you know, he's very good as a winger and that's been a debate for for quite a while is he a central center forward is he a, a a left winger you know with this you sort of get the best of both worlds and so with him not having a winger to with the system not having a winger you know he sort of create becomes that half winger um and so as a result the opposition then have a, a sort of a, a dilemma of do we follow him or do we stay in our zone areas? In which case, you're creating space for the likes of Fernandez and Martial to run into. If they do follow, or if not, um, then you know you're creating space elsewhere um, and leaving him 
sort of a mark. So, um, again, have him on truth wide, um, and then you'll sort of get him into the game as much as possible. And then also have him on comeback on defense as well. So you only want one of your two strikers on comeback on defense, and, you know, it really should be the more mobile of the two. So in this case, you know, Rashford with more energy, more stamina, and he's faster as well. You know, he's sort of the ideal one out of the two to do this. And then with Martial, you've sort of got that all-out striker role there. So exactly the same as his as his last uh, roles in the other video. Getting behind in terms of attacking runs and then with defensive support, stay forward as well so that he can be uh, that outlet going forward and that out ball when you need to counter. He can hold the ball up or he can make the straight running behind and you can try and play him in from there. So that rounds off the player instructions. Now we can move on to tactics. So there's a little bit of changes here, and I'm going to, of course, explain to them. So pressure on every touch, that's the same as the previous formation. So what happens with pressure on every touch is you still get that emphasis on pressing in certain situations. So when, say, for example, you lose possession, the opposition are sort of playing themselves into trouble, lose touches and passes, etc., and then they'll press and they'll seize the initiative. But otherwise, they're then going to form and bed back into their shape uh, and then, you know, get back into their mid block. In which case, you know, you're sort of having an emphasis on that more, that defensive solidity. So with pressure on heavy touch, you get that. Um, and that's something you'll see in the gameplay as well on, on your right hand side of the screen. Um, you know, very much a lot of the time they are, you know, the bed back into their shape. Um, and they've got back into sort of you know where they um, where their their roles and where they need to be. Um, with width, have this on five. Uh, the reason why you have this moved up from four was in the last video is because obviously you don't have wingers in this case, so you have one less player um, on each side to sort of get out wide to those wide areas. But also because you've crowded out the central areas more, um, you can be a little bit wider because um, there's still going to be less space because obviously now you've got three centre-backs instead of two. So obviously that means there's less space in the middle for the opposition to play right through you. And as a result, um, you know, you sort of complement that style well. With depth, have this on five, a little bit deeper than the last video because, of course, it is a, a more defensively minded formation. But again, it's still it's still that mid block, so you can still sort of um, you know have an emphasis on the press in some situations when you need to. But like I say, they're going to bed back in and be more robust when they need to. So offensively now, we are actually changing this from uh, possession to fast build-up. So um, the reason why is that obviously you're trying to hit teams on the counter-attack, but you know rather than possession, you are playing teams who, let's say, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea. These are you know very teams who like to employ an extreme press a lot of the time. Um, and so with fast build-up, you can just hurt them a little bit more. The likes of those teams, for example, they'll all commit. So let's say Liverpool, so you've got Liverpool, your front three, uh, and then um, the two fullbacks will commit as well, and so, you know, they're going to leave sort of holes and gaps, and so with fast build-up, you're going to be able to exploit them better. In addition to that, because in the last system, we had it on possession, but we still had an emphasis on counter-attack because we had wingers, uh, as well as strikers, who would all have uh, getting behind on their instructions. But obviously, we've now only got wing backs, and they're on... Um no, they're not on getting behind. So therefore, there's less of an emphasis on the counter-attack from individual instructions. So with that, you have to sort of make it yourself. And you do this by changing this to fast build-up. So again, a lot of more emphasis on the counter-attack this time rather than retaining possession. Yes, there will still be a lot of situations where you can sort of recycle possession. You have those calm sort of um, phases and situations within a game where you're uh, just you know calmly passing the ball about recycling possession and probing for an opening as you'll see in the gameplay on the right but um you know with fast build up you you get a, a better emphasis on the counter attack and a more effective presence with it offensively with the width we have this on eight so the reason why we got this a lot wider um is because of course as i've keep mentioning no wingers so how do you create that width well you've got to do it within the within the tactics so this time because of the fact you've got three central backs you've got three central midfielders and two strikers as well um they're all a little, still close enough to each other so you've still got um you know options short passing options but uh out wide then you, your wing backs are really going to get on the touch line and you can still spread the play when you need to with players in the box i have this on five so you've got the two strikers and then fernandez is sort of you know probing 
both ways, sort of circling around the edge of the box, but occasionally we'll get into it, um, but you know, rarely. So with this, there should be less emphasis on crosses into the box. The reason being is that um, you know you don't need to do it as much. There should be more of an emphasis on countering, countering and playing through the middle because you've got those central areas on, on lockdown essentially. So you know, we play in the box, have it on five, um, and you should get that nice balance there. Finally, with set pieces, we have both of these on four, as I talk about in every video. It means that you'll have two men back, uh, which is more than enough to deal with the opposition counter-attack because they'll only ever leave one man forward on this game. But then you get an extra added option and an added target in the box. So, you know, it gives you more of an option to be threatening from those uh, set piece situations, corners, etc., with an added target. So... That rounds it off then, guys, for this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do um, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell as well for regular uh, notifications every time I upload. If you've got any questions about the tactic, please don't hesitate to let me know, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, if you've got any suggestions for other tactics as well, please do keep them coming in. I know Red Bull Leipzig is getting a lot of suggestions at the moment, so I'll try my best to get round to that one hopefully next. It's going to be a long video, but we'll see. Uh, sort of how that one plays out uh, if you've enjoyed this video please do leave a like let me know that you have enjoyed it um, and it just gives me uh, more motivation to keep releasing more on that note we are going to finish it off there thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time Come on.